as uh, arise, which is what? You see, many brothers, for example, la, khalas, I can take her out, I can go out with her, I can talk to her, I can this, I can that, I can whatever, because al-fatiha has been conducted. This is not allowed. You have no right over this lady until the marriage contract has been done. And what is the marriage contract? You have a sheikh, you have two witnesses, you have the wali of the person, and then you do the contract. You mention the dowry, you mention the conditions, you are allowed after that to be with her alone, talk to her, take her out, do whatever you want because you're married now. But as for the first situation, you are not allowed to be alone with her, you are not allowed to take her out under any circumstance because the contract is not binding. Because it's not a contract, it's only a verse that is recited in a improper place and area. Understood? Alhamdulillah. Number seven. The groom ascending an elevated bridal platform or stage with his bride in front of other women on his wedding night. Wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah. And I'm pretty sure we all witnessed this in our past, in our hooligan days. We've witnessed this. But in our Islamic days, can we witness this? Of course we cannot witness this. Haram. Where you see, especially the Lebos amongst us, where you see, Tabarakallah, the, the bridegroom dressed up with a nice suit, greased up hair, nice tie, his wife is on the, on the ascension, on that big throne, and then he is presented before all the women, all the women, and he sits with her. This is haram. This is haram. You are not allowed to do this. You are not allowed to be anywhere in that place where there are women of such en masse. You must be away in the men's section. They are in the ladies' section, and this is the way it is Islamically. But to go and be go before the women and confront them, this is an un-Islamic approach, and you are committing a sin. Likewise, number eight, the ascension of the relatives, the groom and the bride on an elevated bridal platform or stage in front of other women. And likewise, you get many times where the relatives all come and they want to sit with the, the couple on each side and in front of all the women. This is haram. A man is not allowed to approach or confront the ladies under any circumstance, even if they're veiled, even if they're veiled. For him to be there is not a proper place. This is a woman's section. What are you doing there? You want to be a woman? You can go there. But you are not a woman, so keep out of there. It's out of bounds for you. It's haram. Even the husband, the bridegroom, to be, for him to be there, he should understand better. Even if they were to chain him or shackle him and try to drag him into that place, he is not allowed. Say, A'udhu Billah, Taqullah Azza wa Jal, Fear Allah, Fear Allah, Keep in the boundaries of Allah Ta'ala and keep far away from this. This is the one who fears Allah Ta'ala. Not, Wallah, it's only the night, it's alright, Khair, Mashia. There's no Mashia here. You get many people, for example, the, when there's music, or, you know, he's a, he's a fearful person, he's a pious person, but he says, but, you know, the mother-in-law, the, the father-in-law, they want this, it's only the night, inshallah, it's all going to be over. What's going to be over? Haram? It's all going to be over? What if Allah quakes to the earth before your very feet? Is it over? It is never over. That incident that partook that night is always there, it's recorded. It's recorded, it can never be over. It can never be over. Do not take minute issues to what you believe minute. It's easy. This is severe. This is severe. There is nothing minute in Islam, haram, minute haram. So it is not over. Keep far away from this. No music, no mixing, no platform, no B being there, final. You don't like this, my love? Keep away from me. You're not a righteous person. So it is. You don't agree with this, the Islamic law, the Islamic tenets? Keep away from me. I don't want you. When awal tariq afdam and akhir tariq, they say. The start is better than the last. And then when you have kids, you have this, you have that, and then, poh, 
Allahu musta'an. She draws you into a mental institution. <laughs> because it's only the night. That night entails and entails and entails and anything can break loose after that. Likewise, the bride, the bride herself, if it's the man who's like that, if he's a cuckold and he wants to allow his wife to do or expose herself in front of men or have music, she's not allowed as well. And if she sees this deficiency from him, put it this way, I would never allow my daughter to be with a man like this from the first of stages. Using male servants in the women's section at parties in some of the hotels, as is the case at some wedding parties. And this is another situation that we see that they say the only waiters and they're not, they're not a problem, the house. This is a major problem. This is a major problem. And if you know of this, and touch you allowed your wife for your female responsibility to be in that place, you are considered the youth, so beware. Some women mingle with men who are not directly related to them under the pretext that they are from the same tribe or extended family. That is like the clan or the tribes that because they believe they're from one clan, then it is not a problem to allow the mingling to partake. This is haram. It is exactly the same as the paternal and maternal cousins mentioned earlier. Number 13, being lax about allowing teenage girls to mingle with young men or older men who are not related to them by claiming that they are still young. This is very, very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Brothers, sisters, you have daughters. You have sons of age which is adolescence. This is a very, very crucial age, a very dangerous age. How are you able to see men around your daughter at the age of 15, 16, 14, 17, 18, with the excuse they're only young, they're teenagers? This is not allowed. It is not Islamic. Do not take this lightly. Men use them as prey. Men today are like predators towards women. And that's the reality. There are many evil people out there. Do not take these issues lightly. Take them with full conviction and acceptance. Acknowledge the situation and implement what you hear. For when you know this and you do it otherwise, you are judged for it. You know, how can we allow our 16 year old or 15 year old daughter who's just a flower that has not opened up to be with men, to be with young men, older men. Is this logic? It is dangerous. Very, very dangerous. When Asma went to Abi Bakrin, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, when she entered in Muhammad's room, he saw her with clothes that were transparent. You can see through. He goes, yeah, Asma. When a woman comes of age, she is not allowed to show except her face and her hands. In other words, cover yourself. You're of age now. She could have been 12 years old, 13 years old. So he warned against this. And like I said today, it is very, very dangerous regarding the issues of teenage children. Beware. Because a lot of young men like to experiment things they haven't before and they prey on young girls like them. If not them, the sallallahu alayhi wa is the older men. So be careful, she's your daughter and treat her like a precious golden uh, thing. The taxi driver or chauffeur being alone with a woman in the car. This is not allowed. Oh, taxi drivers, you are allowed to taxi drive. But when are you allowed to taxi drive? When you are doing it in an Islamic way. 
You must understand the etiquettes of taxi driving.